Yes, hi guys, I'm uh, Matis Kretz. I work for Swisscom. I'm the head of cloud empowerment there. We are a, a small team of uh, cloud experts helping our customers, internal and external customers, in their journey to cloud-based engineering. And I'm Dormain Drewitz. I'm on the product marketing team at Pivotal. Um, and this is uh, the first time that I've been doing the Cloud Foundry in the enterprise track chair uh, at CF Summit in Europe, but I've done it two times for North America. So we uh, have some observations from kind of what we were able to, to look through in terms of the submissions that came in for this track. One thing that we, um, we talked about as kind of an important criteria for how we look at the submissions to build this is um, you know, really focusing on real end users with real experiences in the enterprise. And so while sometimes some of the submissions had really interesting sounding um, uh, ideas about what they were gonna show as being possible on Cloud Foundry, we favored real end users who would have not been talking about something that maybe it's just a science experiment. So, Mathis, do you want to go through uh, what we've got lined up for day one quickly? Yes, sure. So, um, when we were, Dormain and I were preparing this track, we had the, the nice problem that we had a lot of submissions to choose from, which is, as I said, a nice problem to have because that shows us that our community in the enterprise is very much alive. Our stuff that we engineer every day in the Cloud Foundry community is being used to create value in the enterprise, which um, would be a very bad sign if it didn't happen. It would be a very bad sign for us. But luckily, that's not the case, and we have a brilliant lineup for you prepared for today. We have contributions by Talenx, which will be the starting point of this, set, uh, of this track. Then we have Thales Digital Factory and Pivotal. Then we have Fisurf, then Wipro Energy and Pivotal. Then we have the Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance together with Pivotal. We have the Fidelity International folks and we finish off with a contribution by Air France and KLM. So as you can see, we have a very interesting lineup planned for you today. Yeah, I think one way to think about um, day one is these are some of the stories that were submitted that seemed maybe a bit more broad and general about uh, the adoption or um, how some of these different organizations have gotten started with the platform. But as we look to day two, we start to get into some more specific use cases uh, and some interesting things that are happening inside a couple specific organizations like Rabobank, Dativ, Reichswaterstadt, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, and Novatech, uh, which is doing a lot of uh, work within uh, the, the German-speaking regions. And then finally with uh, Comic Relief, uh, which is a UK-based charity uh, that's been using... Cloud Foundry for a number of years and continues to kind of push the boundaries. So they're adding a, the container service is going to come up in that panel. So I think, you know, getting to sort of today is sort of the warm up, you know, uh, see kind of the, the general overview and tomorrow is kind of the master's level courses, if you will. Um, but we, we both agreed as we were talking about this track that it's, it's obviously the most important track in the whole conference. I mean, and you guys are obviously the smartest people at the conference. No, don't leave. <laughs> okay, minus two. <laughs> um, because of what Matha said, that is, this is all an indication of the, the growing health of the community in terms of the end users that are really putting this to the test inside enterprises. And last year, I think there was maybe four or five different end user enterprises that were presenting at the conference. Like I said, I wasn't a track chair last year, um, but I was always keenly watching those. Um, and so this year, the fact that we had, you know, uh, more than enough to fill the entire track 
So I think about 13 different talks. That's a pretty big jump. So over 100% growth in terms of the number of end users that are presenting here. And I think this doesn't even count Orange, which is presenting in another track um, as they've, they've gotten even more into the just going straight into technical tracks. You know, we still consider them part of the most important track, of course, uh, that being this one. So, yeah. And it's kind of interesting also, this, uh, this next bit that we've observed as, as the evidence grows about use of Cloud Foundry in the enterprise. Exactly. So we've heard a very interesting talk about diversity in the keynotes. And again, here we observe a lot of cultural diversity. We have... Um, uh, contributions from many different countries in Europe. This is obviously also a um, characteristic of the European summit. We get a lot more different countries uh, contributing. We have people, local people, then we have people from France, the Netherlands, the UK, uh, Germany, and probably we've forgotten some flags here as well. well yeah, so. maybe some folks who are on some of the panels or yes. add some additional uh, coverage across the globe. So this is exciting for me because, yeah, in the, the North American one, it's usually like two countries. Um, so not as many flags. So that's always a disappointment. But I think with that, we'll hand it over to our first speaker. Uh, thanks to the folks who are coming in. Uh, welcome and enjoy the day. And we'll start off with Daniel Boston from Talanx, who's going to tell us about their journey from AWS to Cloud Foundry. Thank you very much.